Okay, hold on to your seats because now we're going to talk about some DNA control mechanisms. So before we even move on into this, what do you think this would involve? Let's think about this for a minute. DNA control mechanisms. Probably mechanisms, systems, things that are going to control DNA. Woohoo! All right, we're ready to rock and roll now. Okay, so um, it's also important to note that these DNA uh, control mechanisms are in pro uh, uh, the the ones that we're going to talk about right now are in prokaryotic cells only. But let's first start with the discoverers of the control mechanism. So back in 1961, Francois Jacob. He's the one sitting. Looks like he's got his tongue hanging out of his mouth or something. I'm not sure. And Jacques Monod. Oh, and he's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Boy, those were the days, I guess, when they smoked in the labs. Uh, eh, uh, uh, uh. Let me just throw up now. Okay, so um, they discovered this control mechanism in 1961. Okay, so... This operon re, uh, regulation, an operon is an operator. It's a, think of it like an operator and it controls this RNA polymerase. And remember the job of the RNA polymerase, many jobs, but the, it's gonna bind to it, open it up and start this process. So um, it gives access to that DNA strand. So it, it big job here. So the operator, is, I mean, I'm sorry, the operon is part of this promoter region right here. So part of this promoter sequence, it's located between the TATA box and the start codon. So here's your start codon here. So it's between those two. All right. Um, okay, so you can have um, different types of regulation, regulators. You can have a repressor and an inducer. So a repressor, think about it. If you're repressing something, you're holding it back. Sometimes you have people say they're repressing memories um, and um, they're just they're, they're holding it back. So a repressor does just that. It, is the, it acts as an off switch. So here's our um, RNA polymerase. And so here's the actual process. Here's DNA, messenger RNA. So you're trying to make tryptophan, amino acid tryptophan. And here is um, the protein. And here is a, a co-repressor. So it's going to bind in here and make it inactive. All right. So it shuts it off. And you can see that then when this binds to that messenger or to that DNA, now you have this um, DNA polymerase, I'm sorry, the RNA polymerase, it doesn't work anymore. So no RNA is made. Um, so um, you can have a, an active repressor. So uh, again, it acts as an, as an off switch. So the repressor is on, here's an active repressor. It fits here into the operator. The RNA polymerase is no longer active, uh, can't get past it, and so no RNA is made. So now you can have inducers. The inducers act as an active, I mean, as an on switch. So the repressors are the off switch, the um, inducers, and if you think about um, one way that you hear this very commonly is induce labor. That means you're starting labor before a woman's body is actually ready to start labor. You can give her uh, medications and she can start later. They can induce labor. So this inducer acts as an on switch. And so you can see here's the protein. You have um, an inducer that fits in there. Now you have an inactive repressor. And so it's you can see it changes the shape. So now it's not going to fit in there. RNA polymerase is going to be able to do its job and move right on along and make this happen. So both of these are negative feedback loops. It means they stop a process that's occurring and get it going in the opposite direction. So they're actually gonna, um, they're controlling what's going on. They're also considered regulatory genes as well. Oh my, not sure what that's all about. All right. 
Okay, so now we move into DNA control mechanisms that are in all cells. So those last ones were only in prokaryotic cells. Now these are in all cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And again, these are ways to control gene expression. So how do we, how are genes expressed? So transposons, they're called jumping genes. And these DNA segments, they act as blockers to transcription. So they actually block the transcription process. So Barbara McClintock discovered this control mechanism back in the 1940s, and she worked with maize corn. And um, she actually won the Nobel Prize for this too. There's two types of transposons that exist. There's a basic insertion where you just insert a gene. So you're just actually inserting something. This is the simplest form. Or you can use this transposase gene. Oh, ends in ASE. So what's it going to be? That's right. It's going to be an enzyme that controls this um, transposition here, this transposon. All right. So the... Um, and so this transposase, what it does is it's an enzyme that allows the DNA to jump from location to location. Another example, um, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Sorry, my, now my mind is jumping from place to place. All right, now we talked about chromatin versus chromosomes. Here's a great picture just as a reminder. Chromatin looks like spaghetti. It's the DNA. It's the nuclear material in there. I mean, the genetic material inside the nucleus. And, um, but it looks like spaghetti. It's all over the place. But, and then we have chromosomes. So once it's become tightly coiled around those histone pro proteins, so it's become um, coiled up, it's organized so that it can go through this process. Um, um, and so, um, sorry, my son is texting me and I had to answer him. There we go. Now we're back on the road. Okay, so chromatin versus chromosome. So you can see the difference here. Spaghetti versus tightly coiled, very organized, ready to go into this process of um, metaphase uh, through mitosis. Okay, so... Um, so the control mechanism, so you have your, your signal, the chromatin, the signal hits the chromatin and it's going to start this process. Um, so the DNA control mechanisms that are in eukaryotes mainly, um, that DNA is wound up so we go from chromatin to chromosomes, like it's going to go for mitosis, but it's not able to be transcribed. The enzyme transcription factory can't be built because it cannot get to the DNA strand. That would be a DNA control mechanism. Here's our normal process um, um, where we would have DNA and then the transcription and our introns spliced out and, um, and our exons spliced together here, RNA processing. We have our cap and our, our um, tail. We transport out to the cytoplasm. And we uh, and we make proteins. All right. So, with um, uh, this DNA control mechanism, that is unable to be transcribed. So DNA that is unwound, like in the G1 phase of inner, like here. So in this is in the G1 phase. We're going to learn all about that next. Is able to be transcribed. So the enzyme transcription factory can be built because it can get access to this DNA strand. Um, now remember, eukaryotic cells also can also control the removal of exon, uh, introns and rearranging of exons. So here, that controls um, in the post-translation modification. So we can be here and then those introns are spliced out with that spliceosome, and then the exons are put together, and they can be put in any order. And then, um, and again, here's our splicing out. Now, um, another important point to look at is the um, length of this poly A tail. Remember, that can be between 50 and 250 um, uh, adenines that are added on there. 
Okay, so when we look here at this chaperonin, um, the protein is going to stay in the cell. So the protein, the, the final question is lastly, did the protein require a chaperonin or the rough endoplasmic reticulum for folding it into a 3D shape? And so to fold up, um, to fold up that protein, is it going to require, uh, which one's it going to require? Because there's different shapes that proteins can fold into. So if the proteins you sh um, that you chaperone stay inside the cell, those stay inside, they're fully assembled, um, such as enzymes or cytoskeleton parts. Proteins that use rough endoplasmic reticulum exit the cell so, um, for things like communication or protection by the extracellular matrix. So inside chaperonins, outside going to be uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, the genes that are transcribed help determine what the cells are going to mature over time. This is an important concept because all the, star the, the cells start off what we call undifferentiated. They don't have a job yet. So they're going to start off and they could do just about anything. Um, and uh, in other words, that when the cells then grow up, they're going to have their adult function. So they start off undifferentiated, but then as they as the cells mature, they become a liver cell or a heart cell or a bone cell. They become those, but they don't start off that way. Lots of research being done in this area for many different reasons, making um, uh, organs and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, lots of research being done. So um, uh, let's see, do I want to go into that? No, I don't think so. Let's just end it here. Woo! All right, moving on. Next, we will hit bio, DNA biotechnology. Have a great evening, morning, whatever it is for you.